Elden Ring is finally here. We've long awaited From Software's next foray into the Soulsborne genre. This has been one of my personal most anticipated games of 2022. I went full media blackout after seeing the initial trailer at the Microsoft conference at E3 2019. Something I did know about this game before it came out was that it's going to be open world and there's going to be a horse for traversal. This really kind of got me worried because this is From Software's first attempt to an open world game with their formula. One thing that I love about the Dark Souls games, Sekiro, and most importantly Bloodborne is their Metroidvania style of level design, curated and handcrafted by the developers. That is something that is lost in open world games. Like we see that with Ubisoft uh, with their formula with the towers that unlock parts of the map, markers littered around the entire map denoting activities that you can do. It's just, it's just clutter. It's just clutter. There's obviously other companies that do this, but Ubisoft was the first person that kind of, the first company that kind of popped into my head. But I know there's other companies that do it as well. Going into Elden Ring, I felt very cautious, but optimistic because I have faith in the team. They haven't let me down yet. February 25th, Elden Ring released worldwide, and to my surprise, it landed 97 on Metacritic and universal praise, and I was floored. It's safe to say that Elden Ring is the most ambitious game From Software has ever made, and they exceeded all expectations, and then some. From opening the very first door leading into the lands between in Limgrave, to the side catacombs and caves littered throughout the world, to the great castles and dungeons harkening back to the Metroidvania style of level design. The open world is one of the most rewarding and jaw-dropping things to explore I've ever played. Every time I went towards a direction, there was something that caught my attention and I lost hours exploring. Meeting NPCs for various quest lines and having that feeling of not knowing where this quest is going to lead showed me why I fell in love with these games. Why I love the Soulsborne games from the very beginning. The beautiful landscapes, the enemy design, and the varying areas in the lands between really showed I had nothing really to worry about. The main story is somewhat more streamlined than other entries, but that's not a bad thing. It's engaging in how it changes depending on what NPCs you have and who you meet on the way and what From Software is really good at. From Software took some aspects from their library for the combat in Elden Ring, but it really does feel like an evolution from Dark Souls 3. I'm all in for it because I love it. In this review, I'm going to be talking about three major aspects of the game. First being the open world, second being the story and the lore and how it intertwines together, and lastly will be the combat and boss design. This is From Software's most ambitious game, and they almost nailed all of it. I absolutely adore this game, and it's my game of the year for 2022, but I do have some fundamental problems with some design choices that they did. Let's just jump right into the open world. Like I said in the intro, the lands between is a beautiful world just to get lost in. Right when you open the door to the open world, it beckons you to explore it. To look under every rock and search every ruin. I ran down a random beach where I saw a cave, started to explore it, and once I beat the mini boss there, the other side of the cave took me to an area that I thought I could not even get to, a little island where there were even more goodies. This happens constantly in the lands between. The caves, catacombs, and heroes graves remind me of the Chalice Dungeons in Bloodborne, but they are actually curated by the developers. Every inch of this world is handcrafted for the player to explore and unlock its mysteries. A smart idea that From Software implemented in Elden Ring is how the, the world map works. At the beginning, it's just kind of like a regular map. It feels big, there's a lot, there's lots to explore. But as you start getting map fragments that are around the world, the map starts zooming out slowly and expanding the area to cover even more. I thought I was rearing the end of the game because the map was so damn big already. I've explored so much. I felt like the, it was we're getting to the end. But there was a whole area I haven't unlocked yet. There were side areas that I haven't been to yet. Saying this game is massive is an understatement. The map is not littered with quest markers or towers to get. Elden Ring lets the player explore the map on their own terms, and I'm so thankful for that. As I touched in the intro of the video, the one thing that I love about From Software games is the Metroidvania style level design. This is so evident in Bloodborne, and I thought it might take a backseat with the open world formula. I was dead wrong. Alongside the caves and catacombs, there are full on dungeons and castles to explore that give us that level design in full force. For example, the first castle, Castle Stormvale, 
it's massive. Even on my first playthrough, I missed a couple of things to explore. Since Elden Ring has verticality now, since there is jumping involved, there are so many different ways you can traverse the castle, going through the windows or going through the front door, going through the side door, whatever you want to do. It lets you play the style of game that you want to play and take it at your pace. This happens again in Lindal's Castle, Farm Azula, and so many more places in Elden Ring. I've had at least half a dozen moments playing this game where my jaw dropped in awe. Seeing Lunaria for the first time, getting to the Syrafra River well and not knowing what that area had in store for me, getting to Lindal Castle and exploring it, getting to the snow area and knowing this game has so much more to it. I could go on and on and on. Farm Software has made the best and the most rewarding open world game I've ever played, and it's a feat that should be praised. From Software game story and lore is intertwined deeply into the world, items, and the NPCs that are scattered around the world. Sometimes a story can be vague and the player must really pay attention to see what's happening, like in Bloodborne for example. Other times it's laid out for the player on a silver platter and tells the player what is going on as the events are happening, such as in Sekiro. Elden Ring takes the mix of both. The main story of the game is pretty straightforward and is told in a pretty linear way for the most part. Talking to NPCs at the round table and your adventures fill in the gaps. Also after beating bosses there's a lot of monologuing happening, which like I could give or take honestly. There's, there's, after, after a boss dies they talk for a long time. For an open world game I think this needs to be done. It's, it's hard to keep track of a story when you're exploring a massive world. The lore of the world and stories of random NPCs around the world is a little bit more of a mystery when it comes to Elden Ring. And that's where the player has to read item descriptions, really listen to what and where the NPC is going to be going. Long quest lines such as like the Rani quest line are still part of the game, which I love. And it changes what kind of ending you can get. There are so many quests like that. The Fia quest line, the Dung Eater, the Rani quest line. There are so many like that and it really makes me happy that they put the time and effort into that. They really did take the best of both worlds and combine them in different ways. I'm not getting into the lore of the game because I know there's a lot of other channels that can do it so much better than I, such as Vati. Uh, so if you guys want to go watch some, some lore videos, their channels are going to be in the description below, especially Vati, because he does very, very good lore videos. Is it my favorite story from any From Software game? No, it's not. It really didn't have that same awe feeling I had when I first played Bloodborne. But the world building is done so well and it really tells us that the lands between is a place that has been through so much. Let's be honest here, this combat is straight up Dark Souls 3 with some minor tweaks and changes. But honestly, I'm all here for it. I love Dark Souls 3 combat. With the additions of Ashes of War which add a weapon skill and change how the weapon scales slash element it has is a great addition to this combat. There are so many damn weapons in this game. There are so many ashes of war in this game. They really did outdo themselves when it comes to different playstyles the developers let the players have. Having the option to be able to jump on a whim has really opened up different ways to attack. I started with the great sword and shield, which I usually do on my first playthroughs. It's kind of my sword and board kind of uh, technique. I switched to the colossal sword, which honestly looked awesome. But it didn't work well because I feel like the damage slash how much or how long it takes to hit just didn't work that well. Finally, I changed to the dual katanas and actually had a good, unique build. This gives the player so much more freedom. Having the different forays into whatever you want to jump into just gives me so many more options, so much freedom how to play this game. Elden Ring lets you tackle a fight or a boss the way you want. All I see when I scroll YouTube right now is different ways that people are finishing the game. Let it be rune level 1, bows only, crafted items only, all that kind of stuff. Since we're in combat, I want to take a little time to talk about the bosses as well. I love most of the bosses in this game. There are so many bosses, over 150 bosses slash mini bosses. But I really want to talk about the main bosses, because a lot of mini bosses are reskins or they're double or there's a gank fight and stuff like that. But I really want to talk about the bosses that have remembrances. I absolutely loved most of the bosses they had in Elden Ring. Unique events such as the Festival of Radan, to the gimmick fight of Rykard harkening back to Yorm, all the way to fighting the first Elden Lord. These, among others, showed me how much I love From Software boss design. 
I wish I could say that for all of them. This is where the nitpicking kind of comes into play. There's a part of the game after the Fire Giant where the balancing team, I don't know, took a week off and forgot to go back to see how much damage the bosses, the subsequent bosses do. For example, Faramazula is a punishing area in itself. It is a tough area to get through. The dragons do a lot of damage. The enemies themselves do a lot of damage. And then once you get to Malekith, that's a whole different deal. After dying to him for about an hour, I knew it wasn't, wasn't me. This boss does almost 60 to 70% of your health bar with one strike. I had no idea this was even possible in this game. I don't know what they were thinking when balancing comes in with these last bosses, but they missed the mark on this one. Melania, for example, I don't really mind her stealing health on hit. I think it's a really, really cool mechanic, but her waterfowl dance is just broken. If you're a melee build and your job is to be face to face with her, if she charges it up, it's almost an instant death because it's so hard to react to it. Horalu, in another sense, is the same way. His suplexes and Stone Cold Stunners are vicious and do so much damage. There's no warning of this ramp up. It forces the player to have vigor or change your build. You think that might be a good mechanic, but that's the antithesis of how this game is made. This game lets the player choose how to play the game, choose how to take the bosses down, but the latter part of the game either forces you to change how you play the game or change your build entirely. Maybe put points into stats that you don't want to, or even summon. This is a major misstep from Foam Software's part, and I hope in subsequent patches they might fix this. Sorry, I had to rant about that because I thought I was the only one that had this problem, but then a lot of my friends reached out and said, man, that, that is the same problem that I'm having, and I felt that validated. Maybe this wasn't a problem for you. I, it was a big problem for me, and I did not see this ramp up coming. And I, like, I, I seriously do not care how anybody beats the bosses. I, it doesn't matter to me. That's the beauty of Elden Ring. The problem comes in when the game forces you to play a certain way at the end of the game. Elden Ring is a special game. It's a game that I didn't think From Software could make, and I'm so freaking happy I was proven wrong. The open world begs to be explored, and giving the game more verticality has really changed how the player can tackle dungeons, caves, catacombs, tombs, and castles. They tackle the storytelling in a great way, but leave so much to the player to unearth the many mysteries that the lands between gives. Giving us combat that is yet familiar, but different. I love this game and it's my game of the year in 2022. I don't see anything actually taking it off the list. Is this game my favorite From Software game? No, that's that crown still goes to Bloodborne. That goes to Bloodborne because of the storytelling, lore, atmosphere, and boss design. It's just on another level. The major faults when it comes to balancing does diminish it, especially when it's around the end of the game. I feel like that's really going to put people off. That does not take away that From Software made something special. It will be talked about for years to come, maybe even generations. Thank you guys for checking out this video. If you guys like this video, please hit the like button. If you guys like the content on the channel, hit the sub button. If you guys want to support the channel directly, you can go to patreon.com slash beard and the hair. Even at $1, it helps make these videos, keeps the cameras on. I stream over on twitch.tv slash beard and the hair five days a week. Different Souls games, Final Fantasy, that kind of type thing. Let me know what you guys think about Elden Ring and what you guys think about this review. If you guys enjoyed it, if you guys didn't like it, if I'm off my rocker about the end of the game, you let me know. You let me know. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for listening. And I'll see you guys next time. Hey! Oh! Elden Remembrance. Let's go.